everybody, I'm Nick, and in this video I'm going to show you how much slower, yes, you read that right, slower, not faster, a native AOT API is in .NET 8 compared to its runtime counterpart. Now, in this video I'm going to explain why native AOT applications can be slower compared to the runtime counterpart, or why they can be faster, and what the benefits are, and we're going to try to give everything an equal chance, so we're going to see some benchmarks, some performance tests, we're going to compare everything, and you're going to have as much of an accurate reference point as possible to understand what's going on with native AOT and performance. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training, check out my courses on dongtrain.com. Okay, so let me show you what I have here. I have a couple applications, they both have the exact same functionality. So here, I have an API, which all it's really doing is it generates some to-do items and then it's exposing them through the to-do endpoint so to-dos on the top level gets you everything and to-dos by id gets you a specific to-do item by id and if i quickly just go ahead and run this let me just show you how that looks on the response level i'm going to go send and as you can see we have the to-dos and if i say give me to-do number one i'm gonna get only that one. And that's basically it. And then we have the native AOT counterpart. Now, the only thing that is different between these two applications is actually a single flag in the CS Pro. So they didn't even need to be separate applications, but just to separate the executables later for the testing, I have them as separate applications. But the only difference is basically this flag, native AOT true on this native AOT application, and none of that in this normal one. The rest is just the same. We're going to be running some tests in Docker as well. That's why we have the default target OS, but that's sort of irrelevant for the time being. Now, before I show you the actual running performance between the two applications and how many requests per second they can handle, what I did is I added the following flags over here. So I went and I grabbed the iHost application lifetime service from the DI container and I register a hook, an event basically saying that when the application has started, print me the delta between now and when the application, when the executable started running. And what this gives us is how long the application takes to start. This is very powerful when you want to measure cold starts, for example, to see how long does an app take to run for the first time, and why is that important? Well, if you put one of these applications in a container, or if you put it into a serverless Lambda function with AWS Lambda or Azure functions, cold starts really, really matter because they can give a really bad experience, so we're going to eliminate all that. Now, to give you the clearest idea of how the application startup time looks for both applications, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove any sort of logging from the application. So I'm going to go to appsettings.json for both applications and set the log level to error so we don't see anything printed in the console, but the startup time in milliseconds. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say .NET Publish. I don't have to specify anymore that I want this to be in release mode. .NET Publish by default is in release as you can see over here. And if I cd into the publish folder, you can see I have the application listed over here. So if I say sample API exe it takes 42 milliseconds for the application to start which is really really good and you can see this be higher and lower depending on some caching that can happen on your system so 72 milliseconds super super good for the runtime but i'm going to go all the way back now and i'm going to do the same for the native aot api so i'm going to go here and again dotnet publish is enough and what you're going to see is it's going to generate native code that code that doesn't need the dotnet runtime to be installed all you need is just that exe run it and everything is fine everything will work without you needing to install anything and that's very very powerful in a way it will run the same way that a go application or a rust application will work you still have garbage collection and all that goodness but there is no jit there is no just in time compilation to basically compile your code as your application is running within that runtime and now we're gonna cd in the windows version and i'm gonna say cd into the published version as well and then as you're going to see, we have just a single EXT that contains everything about our application. And it's 9.3 megabytes. Really, really good. Don't worry about this PDB file. That's just the debug symbols to make getting information when things crash easier. Now, the way this application runs is just like any other EXT. So you just say run the EXE and we went from 73 milliseconds to just 17 and the application is still running if I run it again 17 consistently within that 17 milliseconds mark which is really 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 fast so as you can see massive improvement with cold starts of applications because we don't have much startup work 
that we need to do now with this native AOT application. However, how does runtime performance compare between the two? Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched our second clean architecture course on Dome Train called Deep Dive Clean Architecture in .NET. And it's again expertly delivered by Microsoft engineer Ambikai Mandinban, who also has a YouTube channel, and he's also running clean architecture training for Microsoft employees within Microsoft. This is a unique opportunity to learn how to build applications using clean architecture by someone who writes code for technologies like Teams, PowerPoint and Word, and his code is used by millions of users every month. Not only did we launch this course, which is a follow-up to the Getting Started we already have, but now both courses are bundled into a From Zero to Hero Clean Architecture in .NET bundle, which also has a permanent 20% discount. So if you want to buy both, that's the best value you're going to find. Now to celebrate the launch, I'd like to offer the first 500 of you a 20% discount on this brand new course. So check the link in the description and use code CLEAN20 at checkout. This is by far the best Clean Architecture course you're going to find out there everything updated to latest.net with latest practices by someone who's actually practicing what he's teaching in one of the biggest companies in the world. So don't miss this opportunity. Now back to the video. Okay, so startup time is good. And we kind of expect that because that's the whole point of native AOT. Now the challenge is can native AOT perform as well as a runtime application during its runtime. And why do I say that? Well, you see, using a runtime and a just-in-time compiler means that we can actually have JIT compilation that optimizes for different scenarios, even though we compiled in only one way in IEL for a CLR application. But with native AOT, you just compile in native code and that's what you have. You don't have a JIT to further optimize as your application is running. So can you be as fast or even faster or are you gonna end up being slower? We're gonna see two examples of this. The first thing I wanna do is as I build these applications right here on my Windows machine, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use K6 which is a performance tool that allows us to measure how fast an application is. And we're going to run this application in the background and try to performance test it for a minute. So we're going to use this file over here where we have 15 virtual users for a minute spamming the to-dos endpoint and checking that we get the two hands so everything works fine. And we want to see how many requests per second we can push. Now, why 15 users? Well, that's a bit tricky because I'm running both the application and the thing that is running the stress test on the same machine, on the same CPU and RAM, that's the number that is not going to saturate my CPU to 100% over here, as we're going to see in a second. So what I'm going to do is run the normal application first, the one using the runtime, and as you're going to see, it is over here. I'm going to just say .NET and point to the DLL, 70 milliseconds the application is in fact running. And I can see that because I can go here and say, send a request and I'm getting my to-dos back. That is coming from here. Again, all the logging is turned off. Do not play any role into the performance aspect of this application. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say K6 run stress test. And this is now going to run for a minute. As you're going to see in my resources, I'm sort of saturating my CPU, but not fully. It doesn't pin itself at 100%, meaning we have some window to know that the results are very reliable. So we're sitting at 92, 94%. It's pretty good. Let's wait for a minute and see the results we get back. Okay, so results are back. Don't worry about this being a bit messed up. All the requests work. And the number you want to take a look at is this one, 96.9 thousand requests per second. That is really, really good for the runtime version. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop it and I'm going to go to the native one. So we are now here. As you can see, we have the native application. And all I'm going to say is, hey, go ahead and run this 16 milliseconds to start. But you can see that this application is still running and it is this one over here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, hey, go ahead and run the exact same test for a minute and see if we're going to get more than 96,000 requests per second or less. And again, nothing here is saturated. It's a bit closer to 95, 92 sits there comfortably. But again, nothing at 100%. So we are good. So results are back. And as you can see now, we have quite a few more requests. We went from 96.9 to 97.6. So native AOT appears to not only be faster as startup, but also performs faster for a few thousand requests per second. But here's the catch. I've been using my own machine to run both, and I don't really feel comfortable with that because normally applications like this will run in usually a container or some form of resource constrained environment. So what I want to do in both cases is I actually want to dockerize both applications and performance test them through that container. So I have a Docker file over here 
to have my normal application using the .NET 8 runtime, and then I have another Docker container which just wraps the compiled um, Linux executable and then performance tests that. As you can see over here, I've already built these two applications. So this normal one, as you can see, is using the .NET and then it calls that in the .NET 8 version. Everything is here. And by the way, if you want the code for this video, it's in the description. Use the link in the description to grab it. And then I have the native AOT, same thing as before. And all I'm doing is I'm calling that executable on Linux and that's it. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to run that container over here. And that is the normal one, the one that is using the runtime. Let's go ahead and run it. And as you're going to see, it is running over here and can be called. In fact, I'm going to go here. I'm going to say send and this is coming from that container, I can click here. You can see all the files if you're interested. It's the exact same thing. And I can go into logs and I can see that it took 187 milliseconds to start in a container, which is a bit more. But again, this is sort of expected. This is a true cold start because it's through a container. So let's go ahead and run our performance tests towards that directly. Let's go ahead and say K6 run. Now, actually, I quickly stopped that because I just remembered because now we are running this into a Docker container that is not going to use more CPU than it's allowed to. What we can do in our performance tests is increase the virtual users. And I'm going to go with 100 because before, as I was running this, I only hit a few of the cores, but not all of them hard. So now I say 100, meaning I can push it even harder. And I'm going to say K6 run again. And as you're going to see over here, I'm around 90% again, but with way, way more users pushing the system, which is going to give us better results. Okay, so results are back. And now for the normal application, 52.7 thousand requests per second with more users spamming it, but in an environment where it is a bit more limited. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the container over here and I'm going to run the native version of this application. So as you can see, native application is running. If I click on that and go to logs, you're going to see that the 15 milliseconds are consistent. So even less than the 17 I had. So incredibly fast cold starts. And then you can see all the files. So as you can see, we have the executable uh, with 10 megabytes over here, the Linux one. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to run the exact same performance test against this new API, which as you're going to see, it is truly running. And let's see what results we get now with native AOT. So just to remind you, 52.7 thousand requests per second previously. Let's see now with native AOT. So now, interestingly enough, we went, just to remind you, from 52.7 thousand to 50.6, we lost 2,000 requests per second in a performance constrained environment with native AOT. So it is actually slower. And this is a better representation of how you should expect native AOT perform because this aligns more with the numbers that Microsoft is getting when they are measuring it. And they're very public about it. As you're going to see here, and this is coming from Microsoft, we have Linux and Windows applications before native AOT and the requests per second, as you can see, are 809,000 requests per second on Linux and 746,000 requests per second on Windows. So yeah, Linux does perform significantly better than Windows. However, watch what happens after native AOT in .NET 8. Performance is dropping from 809 to 724 and from 746 to 706. So yes, you have a smaller application size, a way smaller startup and a smaller working set, but you also have a decrease in performance. That's the biggest misconception. People think that just because you're using native AOT, the application will be faster. It won't. Most of the times it will be slower. Now, Microsoft will try to optimize this in the future, but for now, know that native AOT applications are in fact slower, but that is not the point and that is fine. And really, if you can handle 50,000 requests per second, as in you have to consume that much, you probably have the money to just run another container of native AOT applications on the very, very cheap and be done with it. So in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter, but you should know that native code is actually slower than runtime code, which many, many people think is not the case. Now, again, if you want to run this for yourself, you can use the link in the description to grab the code. But now I want to know from you, what do you think about all this? And what do you think about native AOT in general? Because I think we're going to see more and more as we go, but I don't know how much people will actually use it. So leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.